Here in Britain, we should be used to wild weather. Watch it! But this winter, things have been worse than ever. Oh, my God! Floods on a biblical scale. Blown from hell to high water by hurricane-force winds. And battered by the very roughest of rough seas. Some saw the chaos as more of a blessing than a curse. But for most, it's been nothing but misery. The storms have killed 10 people in the UK, ruined the lives of thousands, and caused a billion pounds worth of damage. We will see how the wild weather at the end of last year has set the scene for what has become a record-breaking winter. We'll meet people whose lives have been shattered. There's nothing you could do to stop it. You, you're just part of a nightmare. We'll hear from experts about why it happened. The weather is an enormously complex beast. It really is the case that if a butterfly flaps its wings in the Amazon, Reading can be flooded. And over two programmes, we'll see if anything could have been done to ease the pain of the wettest winter ever. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Back in December, we thought we were facing weather Armageddon. Trains were cancelled, roads were blocked, and thousands of would-be travellers were grounded at one of the world's busiest airports. Take a seat until we have more information about your flight. We're actually in a real live horror movie here. For those who stayed at home, the situation was little better. Power cuts plunged upwards of 50,000 people into darkness on Christmas Day. And they were the lucky ones. Some families lost almost everything they had. It's heartbreaking to think that once we lived here, now everything's gone. Things were bad, but we all hoped the worst was over. We could clean up, and move on. How wrong could we be? Things kept getting worse, and worse, and worse. For four months now, we have been suffering at the hands of a conveyor belt of awful weather as parts of the country turned into water world. Meteorologist Caddy Lee Preston has been studying our climate for more than a decade. She used to forecast the weather for Britain's fighter pilots. In January, she took to the skies above Somerset to see the damage for herself. This is the Somerset levels, and as you can see, it's just massively flooded. You just see tops of trees, hedges, sticking out of the water, and it's been like this for weeks. It's just lakes with little shrubs in, and yet this is people's fields, this is people's livelihood. There's a village there that's completely cut off, it's nearly surrounded by the water, it's almost turning into a little island. I bet living there is pretty horrible at the moment, quite scary. And it's not just here. The whole country has faced a ceaseless barrage of storms. Weather experts agree that the main culprit is a powerful high-altitude river of air, the jet stream. We always have the jet stream affecting our weather. It's just a, a narrow band of very strong winds at quite high level, 30,000 feet. And it's caused purely by the temperature difference between the cooler Arctic air and the warmer subtropical air. And where the two meet, that's where we get our jet stream. At times this winter, the jet stream was speeding at 200 miles per hour. 
double its normal velocity. This year, shifting equatorial winds and the North American cold snap combined to create an unusually large difference between the balmy south and the frozen north. In turn, that made the jet stream stronger and faster than normal. If you've got a strong jet, strong contrast in temperature, we tend to get more rainfall and more storms, and that's exactly what's happened this year. The problems started way back at the end of October last year. It was then that the jet stream pushed the first big weather beast towards our shores. On October the 27th, the nation's weathermen and women warned that a major storm was on the way. Gusts of wind in excess of 80 miles an hour are expected to start battering the southwest from midnight. Starting way back in October, but we had a very, very deep depression which brought lots of rain and lots of strong winds. That was one of the wettest storms we've had for, for quite some time. The following day was the feast day of St. Jude the Apostle, patron saint of desperate cases and lost causes. So the incoming tempest was dubbed the St. Jude's Day Storm. The so-called St. Jude Storm ranks fairly high up in the, in the annals of meteorology. Certainly we had lots of places with gusts of over 70 miles an hour, one or two with gusts of over 80 miles an hour, and one with one on the needles, almost at 100 miles an hour. When the winds blow that hard, driving becomes extremely treacherous. Across the country, high-sided vehicles suddenly toppled over, like this truck on the M11 near Stansted. Twenty minutes later, and just 50 miles to the north, in Hadley, Suffolk, a bus was blown clean onto its side. She started gusting stronger and stronger, and the bus was swaying, and next thing I know, I had no steering. The bus's CCTV captured the moment David was thrown from his seat and landed on the passenger doors. The spring-loaded seat on the bus had actually thrown me up in the air and I'd smacked my head on the roof. I was out cold and I was going through the air backwards. Some motorists travelling behind the now upturned bus rushed to help. A camera on the upper deck catches the surreal sight of them running along the windows and climbing through the sideways-facing stairwell to reach David and the passengers downstairs. Astoundingly, Everybody on board escaped with only minor injuries. It could have easily been so much worse. The extreme winds and heavy rains from the storm created another serious problem, falling trees. Because the storm came so early in the season, many trees still had all their leaves. These acted like sails, catching the wind and forcing the trees over. Others fell because the sodden ground became too weak to hold them upright. Across the country, tens of thousands of trees were uprooted, some causing catastrophic damage. In the middle of the night, one of the trees to topple was in the West London suburb of Hounslow. punctured a gas main under the street, and at 7.35 the next morning, an unlucky spark ignited gas that had built up over several hours. The explosion reverberated throughout the neighborhood. Suddenly our house shook, um, the bed moved, and we could hear things come crashing down, um, car alarms started going off in the street, um, I screamed, so I ran out in my pajamas. <laughs> Um, to see what was going on. Policeman shouted at me and asked me to go back inside and I asked what had happened and he'd said a tree had fallen and there'd been a gas explosion. Two people were killed in Hounslow, along with three others elsewhere in the UK. The gales then spread across Northern Europe, where a further eight people died. Denmark was hit by record gusts of more than 120 miles an hour. 
And in Amsterdam, this cyclist had the narrowest of escapes. The St. Jude's Day storm was but a foretaste of the weather nightmare to come. In just two days, the UK received five billion tons of rainfall. It was as though the contents of Loch Ness had been upturned on our heads. That water topped out rivers, lakes and streams and began saturating the rocks beneath our feet. Britain's natural aquifer storage systems holding trillions of gallons of water in underground rock formations. The stage was set for a watery disaster that would unfold over the following months. When we had the St. Jude's Day storm in October, a lot of us thought that was it, that was our stormy season out of the way. Little did we know we had so much more still to come. Okay, son, you decide.